In this video, we're going to consider the forces on an object which is moving on an incline. So in this particular case, we're going to consider a frictionless incline. So we don't have to worry about that. Mu static, mu kinetic, both zero. So imagine an object floating on a cushion of air on a slight incline. And to analyze the motion of this object, we want to plug into acceleration is the sum of the forces over the mass. So the first thing we do is we draw a free body diagram of the object and the forces on the object are the weight or the force of Earth's gravity and the force of the surface of the incline also called the normal force. Once we've drawn a free body diagram then we go ahead and we choose a coordinate system. We know the object is going to move and accelerate down the incline so we're going to choose a coordinate system where one axis is parallel to the incline and the other axis is perpendicular to the incline. So the x-axis will be parallel and the y-axis will be perpendicular. Now what you will notice is that the weight vector doesn't point along the x-axis, it doesn't point along the y-axis, but it's at an angle. And that means it has a component in the x direction that we've chosen and a component in the y direction. And so we need to break this vector up into components so that we can plug it into the two equations that come from this vector statement here. Acceleration in the x direction is some of the forces in the x direction over the mass. And the acceleration in the y direction is the sum of the forces in the y direction over the mass. So we're going to break the weight vector up into its two components and to do that I'm going to draw it just by itself over here straight down and then on top of that I'm going to draw the axes so I can easily see the vector with just its components. I don't quite like this y-axis right here so I'm going to erase this one I'm going to start that over again. That one's a little bit better. So the gravity vector comes straight down. And if you look closely, you can see that we have a right triangle here with theta in the bottom right hand corner, 90 degrees in the, sorry, that's the bottom left hand corner. 90 degrees in the bottom right hand corner and up at the top here therefore since angles inside a triangle have to add up to 180 theta plus 90 to get to 180 we add 90 minus theta in the upper corner up there. Now how does that relate over here? Well if I draw the horizontal on here you'll see I have my angle theta there and my 90 degree angle here. So inside here I have 90 minus theta. So that means that between the vertical, which is where gravity is, and my y-axis, I actually have angle theta, which is the same angle as the incline over here makes with the horizontal. So if this would be my y-axis here on the picture, that means this angle is theta. So now that I know that the angle theta of the incline is the angle that the weight vector makes with the uh, y-axis here, I can find the components. So the components that I have for my weight vector, and again I'm just going to draw the weight vector here, and I'm going to draw the, the y-axis, and I'm going to draw the x-axis, and here's my theta, and then I have two components. I have the component in the y direction and I have the component in the x direction and there's theta. And you'll notice that the x component is opposite theta. W is the hypotenuse and the y component is adjacent to theta. So I can find the y component and the x component using sine and cosine. So if I look at cosine of theta, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. 
so weight component in the y direction over the hypotenuse which is the weight so the weight component in the y direction is the weight times cosine of theta also written sometimes as mg mass times gravitational field strength times cosine of theta and that is the weight in the y direction and if I plug in for sine of theta over here sine of theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse so sine of theta is the weight in the x direction over the hypotenuse w so the weight in the x direction or the component of gravity parallel to the incline is w sine of theta which is sometimes written as m times the gravitational field strength times the sine of theta so now we have the two pieces we have the weight in the x direction and we have the weight in the y direction we have the two pieces and we no longer need to worry about that vector because we've broken it up into its component parts and we're ready to plug in our vectors which now all lie along the y-axis or the x-axis into these two equations so in the x-direction the acceleration in the x-direction there are the forces in the x-direction and there's only one that's the weight in the x-direction divided by the mass and the weight in the x-direction is mg sine of theta over m and the acceleration in the y-direction I look at the forces in the y-direction and those are normal force in the positive y-direction minus mg cosine theta my y component of the weight in the negative y direction divided by the mass and I happen to have chosen this coordinate system because the x direction is the direction the object is moving the acceleration in the y direction is zero so that tells me that the normal force minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero so therefore the normal force on the incline is mg cosine theta and if I do a little bit of algebra here masses cancel out the acceleration along the incline is just g times sine of theta so here are two equations of motion and relating the forces for an object on an incline